Okay, we are recording. And of course, my theme song work music is not coming on, but that's perfectly fine. We're gonna keep rolling. All right. Okay, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know if you can see my sign too well out there. Welcome to the McGravy Group, uh, which is a civics in action group where brilliant, amazing 8B civic students are going to be discussing civic issues of the day, as well as some lighter things. Um, I'm very, very happy to have uh, nine, possibly 10 of my 8B civic students uh, today, and I am absolutely thrilled. And we did a little pre prep before all of this, and I did not say, first of all, how awesome it is to see everybody. It's, it's, it's just so great to see everyone. Um, Today's Thursday, April 23rd. This is episode one. This could be the first episode or the last episode. Who knows? Um, it's 2 p.m. and um, we're, we're gonna get started. Okay, so for the agenda today, for the people at home, the agenda is pretty simple. We're gonna do some opening remarks. I'm gonna introduce the panel um, and then we're gonna have six issues that we're going to talk about. All the students have um, muted themselves right now and they'll come back on when I ask them to do it. Uh, we're gonna just go in alphabetical order um, and then we are gonna make our way around the nine to 10 people. Okay, so I'd like to meet the panel. I'd like to introduce everyone. So the first person, and again, if you could just say hello after I address you. Uh, Nate, could you say hello, please? Hello. Hello, that works for me, Nate. Uh, Victoria, could you say hello to everyone out there? Hi. All right, very, very nice. Um, McKenna, could you say hello? Hi. All right, there is McKenna. Um, Sean, could you please say hello? Hello. All right, nice to see you. Joshitha, please say hello. Hey. All hi. right. Uh, Elise, please say hello. Hi. All right, Elise has got the cool background there. Um, Maddie, could you please say hello? Hello. All right, and Maddie, you have a special guest with you, or is the guest gone? Who's your guest? Still Who's here. Your co this is my special guest. This is Patches. He's Patches. come to join. Well, I can't wait to hear what his political opinions are of everything. Caleb is the mystery man. He is not here yet, but hopefully Caleb will say hello. Christian, the first hello. one to sign up. Christian, say hello. I didn't hear you, Christian. Hello. Can you say hello, Christian? Hello. I Fantastic. Did. And last but not least, the person. Um, hello. The light, hello. All right, fantastic. Now that we've said hello, um, we are going to um, the first issue, if that's okay. All right, so uh, the first issue, you did not get this question ahead of time. This is a curveball. This is one that you did not know about. It's a silly question, and it comes from me along with your 8B team teachers, if that's okay. So there's a there's a question from your AP team teachers. So the question is, and we're gonna start with Nate in a minute, and if you can pass on this question, it's just your opinion. Um, the question is, what's the deal with students not hitting submit on Google Classroom? This is a trying question for us teachers. Kids are doing the work, the work is beautiful, it's gorgeous, but they don't hit submit, and it's become frustration, frustrating. So if this doesn't apply to you, that's perfectly fine. I'm sure none of you awesome students ever do this, but I'm gonna call on you one at a time. Do you have a theory as to why this is happening? Uh, Nate, do you have a theory? Uh, kids are lazy. Or they're like, kids are lazy. Maybe right, they Nate, finish I appreciate it. You. Like, I maybe appreciate they... your honesty. Like, Victoria, maybe do you have a theory on this? For the, um, when you're on a computer and if you have more than one the, um, account signed in, then sometimes yep. when you go to click turn in, it like doesn't work and instead puts you in another account. Victoria, I never knew that technological uh, little thing. That was very, very cool. That's something I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write that down. So we have that. McKenna, do you have a theory as to why people are hitting for bit? Um. I'm actually guilty of this, and sometimes it's because, like, I feel like we wouldn't know, like, should we hit the turn in button or should we not? 
because it's final. Like once you yeah. submit, gotcha. McKenna, that was really good. Sean, what about you? Do you have a theory as why people aren't hitting submit? Um, I include myself. We always fall like one inch short. We do all the work and then we always just forget to do the turn in thing. It's like uh, that guy when he was running to the touchdown zone and he already celebrated before he ran to the touchdown zone. Very good analogy, Sean. Very good. Yeah, that, that's he, an analogy for television, Sean. Very, very yeah, he, good. He dropped it at the one yard line and then he started celebrating. That's kind of what we do. Sean, very cool analogy. So far, so good. Um, Joshitha, do you have a theory as to why people aren't hitting submit? Uh, yeah, actually, for I'm kind of guilty of it sometimes, too. It's just like I'll be so busy, and then I'll be thinking, okay, I have to do this next, and then it won't strike my mind. Like, oh, wait, I have to submit. So right, usually Joshitha, I that, to great. I that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Um, Elise, do you have a theory that hasn't been set? Um, I think I've done it a couple of times. Like, we just forget just in general because – and with online learning, it just feels like there's so much that you actually have to do, but there's not, but okay. you forget. <laughs> very well, very well said, Elise. Uh, Caleb is still not here. Maddie, do you have a theory? Maddie has stepped out of the building for a minute, so we'll bring Maddie back. Maybe she had to go feed her cat or something. Um, oh, oh, Maddie, you just appeared. Maddie, do you have a theory? <laughs> Um, I think it's just that sometimes, like, I know I do this, if I haven't completed, like, sometimes I'll forget to do, like, one question, and I won't turn it in, and then I'll forget to finish that one question, and so it won't be submitted, and also, it's sometimes hard to know if you should, if it's, like, you're not turning in any work, and it's just marking it as done. Gotcha. Very cool. Thank you. Um, Christian, any thoughts on this? Um, I mean, I don't really know. Like, I guess they could maybe forget. Like people have said, like, they have too much on their minds or maybe they just, like, aren't sure if they should turn it in or not. That could be, like, a possible reason. Okay. But, yeah. And last but not least, our friend Patricia. What are you thinking about this? I'm kind of with Christian because obviously we don't know if we should turn it in, but we're, like, unsure if, like, our work – is good enough to turn in. Okay. That's like me whenever I turn something in. All right, appreciate everyone's honesty. Thank you very much. That, that Those all meant a lot to me. I, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess for me, I'm only on the teacher side sending the work and I'm not thinking about being on the receiving end as the student. So that's a perspective. That's an interesting perspective. Okay, so we're gonna go to issue one. Um, we were in school together for the, together, um, as a class on um, Friday the 13th, March 13th. Um, for me, I actually had an appointment that I had to take my mom to, so I had a personal day on the 13th, so I was not even there, which really, really bums me out. We did have a pretty awesome week before all this went down. We were one of the last groups to go to the EMK Institute on Monday and Tuesday. Every single person has went, went to it, so I guess we gotta count our blessings. So the first question I'm going to ask is, and you can pass on this if it's too personal, how are you and what have you been up to since March 13th, 2020? Uh, Nate, would you like to fill us in on what's been going on in the life of Nate? Nate? Nate, can you yeah, hear me, buddy? Yeah, my mic was just muted physically. Oh, no worries. Um, yeah, I haven't been doing that much. Just reading, really. All right, you have not been doing that much. Nah. That works for me. Do you want to add anything else? Um, not really. All right. Thank you, Nate, for saying anything at all. I appreciate it. Victoria, what have you been up to since the uh, 13th? How you doing? I've just been doing, like, the schoolwork and all the enrichment activities. Then I've also had a chance to, like, talk a lot with my friends, like, online, and just – Hanging out, doing some of my hobbies, like reading and writing. That's it. Cool. Thank you, Victoria, very much. That's great. So, McKenna, how's, how's it been going for you? How have you been? What have you been up to since the uh, 13th? Um, it's been pretty good. I've kind of been sitting in my room a lot reading or outside, like, playing volleyball in my backyard. Oh, great. I also great. wasn't at school on the 13th, so. Oh, you weren't at school either, so we were no. both on Thursday. 
Yeah, I feel like I was cheated the last day. I didn't get. I wasn't there for that announcement uh, when Mr. Gonsalves went on. I'm sure that's a moment that you're all probably going to remember, even when you're older. Um, it, it's pretty. All right. Well, McKenna, thank you very much. So, Sean, Sean, how you doing? What have you been up to, my friend? Um, just like usual, like bike rides, playing outside. But um, during like I try to keep like the school hours, like get up at. Well, I have to actually get up at 7.30 in the morning because my French class is on at 8.30. But uh, I try to keep it as close to the school schedule as possible. All right, great. Thank you, Sean, very much. Joshitha, how have you been? What's been going on? Uh, I'm good. I mean, like, I've had more time for, like, some of the hobbies that I normally wouldn't get to do during a regular school thing. And I got to try out some new things, too. And I also have been trying to keep, like, a regular schedule like Sean has. So, like, just so there's some sense of normal. Great. Thank you, Josepha. That's awesome. Elise, my friend, what have you been up to besides listening to country music? Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty good. I've been working on a lot of songs, um, which is good because I almost have the album finished, which is great. Um, and then I'm, did you say record I'm sorry. Did you say recording songs? No, I haven't. I'm not recording any yet, but I'm hoping to. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Keep going. Um, and with just binging a lot of Netflix. That, we'll get to that in a minute. So you, that, that's going to be common. All right. Maddie, my friend, besides having your wonderful pet with you, what have you been up to? Well, I've been catching up on a lot of things because I missed quite a few days back in February. So I haven't had time to do some stuff that I had been meaning to. So we actually painted my room. We've been wow. like... We've been mulching our yard and also our neighbor's yard for them. Wow. And I've also just been like catching up on stuff that I've been meaning to do, but I haven't had time to just with school and everything being crazy. So I've been able to like read more and go on more bike rides and runs and stuff. Great. Awesome. Love the positive attitude. Christian, my friend, how about you, bud? What's been going on? Uh, so I've been going on bike rides with my brother. I've been playing soccer, doing all the schoolwork, playing Fortnite. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, help my parents with stuff around the house. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, our friend Patricia. What have you been up to? Um, I've been going outside a lot with my sister and brother recently, and I'm trying to keep like my school schedule and talking to a lot of my friends I haven't been talking to before. So Cool. Great. Well, everyone seems to be in a pretty good place. It's really, really, I'm really, really glad that everyone's doing well. I wish I could, you know, hopefully face to face all 120 plus I could do this with, but it's great just to see all of you. All right. We're going to get a little more serious. Um, I think it was um, two days ago, Tuesday, um, Governor Baker announced that schools would be closed for the rest of the year. Um, so I'm just going to ask you, uh, What's your opinion of this? Agree, disagree? Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. So, so Nate, um, how, how are you feeling about the announcement, sir? Uh, I think it's, you know, a good decision. It's a necessary decision, especially because we're not supposed to peak for another week in cases. So I don't know how you would get back at, you know, May 4th if it's supposed to peak the 28th or something like that. Okay. Um, obviously, it's going to be, you know, challenging figuring out how to keep the remote learning going for the rest of the year as well as you know cleaning out the school and getting all your stuff later on they're gonna have to come up with like a really strong way of doing that but so it's definitely, definitely safe some complications down the road but safety as you just said um clearly is taking priority in that instance that was a very good summary of um your opinion okay so victoria i'd love to hear from you what, what, what do you think of Governor Baker making this decision? Um, I think it was probably the best decision he could have made since like it'll stop the overall spread of the virus from like, maybe like kids won't be as heavily affected just because their immune systems are stronger, but they can still catch it and spread it to like older, um, just like people around them. So it's definitely the best decision. And like, since like so many other states have done it before us, like it just kind of like proves that it's like working like our neighbor new hampshire right so um that's a very good point that's a very good point victoria very well said okay so mckenna what do you think what's your opinion of this 
Um, I agree with them. I think that it's a good thing that we close the schools, even though it might make like all of us upset. But I also know that the governor held out for as long as he could before closing them because he really wanted to open them back up so we could all like see each other one more time. But okay, like Victoria said, you don't want to get like everyone sick. It's, even though we're not sick, we could give it to people. Good. Thank you. Yeah, very, well, very well said, McKenna. Um, Sean, sir, what do you think of the decision? I'm really drawn between the two of them because on the one side, yeah, it's necessary, right? But on the other side, um, we plan to open like in early June. The economy is like the plan to open in early June. And if we close schools, especially younger schools, I believe there's a can't really leave children at home alone. And so if people are going back to work, they will be leaving their children at home, which would be illegal. And it would be much harder for them to balance their work and taking care of their kids at the same time. Sean, thanks for that different perspective. That was really cool. I yeah. appreciate that, my friend. Um, Jota, what do you think when Governor Baker made that decision? I mean, it was definitely a good decision that he made just to like kind of prevent the like spread. And since the peak was going to be a week just before school began, I am a little bit upset though because of it. Because, like, since we won't get to see our friends for another like three months, and also we're going into high school next year, which might make everything more difficult since we're just like not having classroom time with teachers like in one on one. Yeah, that. So. That's a good point. That's a good point. And obviously, looking forward to certain things that you're alluding to. So moving into high school and obviously um, end of the year stuff that I know the teachers and Mr. Gonsalv are working very diligently to come up with some things and announcements will be made on that. I'm sure soon. Um, thank you. Elise, what'd you think when you heard governor Baker make that decision? Um, well, I was surprised, but also I was like, well, I mean, it's for the best because like everyone else said, it, it's just, we, it's, it's for the best. Yeah. I'm still sad, though, because because we're going into high school. It's like for the best. Said. So it's going to be hard to – because it's our last year there. We're not going to be able to go back if we don't have younger siblings. Yeah, right, because the seventh and sixth grade will be able to go back, but, but you wouldn't because you guys are going on to, to – um, High school, so that's a that's a very very um, realistic point that you made, Elise. Maddie, how are you how how are you feeling about Governor Baker? Well, actually, decision? when I first heard about it, I wasn't sure if it was true because we had just been grocery shopping because we have some elderly and more like immunocompromised neighbors, and we have been grocery shopping for them. And so we came back, and I was just spammed with texts of people being like, "School's closed," and I'm like, "What?" And so it took me very much by surprise. But it definitely was a decision for the best, and it's, yeah, and it's okay. definitely going to have a like help stop the spreading because, and even though it might not matter to us personally, I think we all have responsibility to help stop the spread because it's really damaging to elderly and immunocompromised people. Great, thank you very much. Um, okay, so we're going to move to uh, Christian. What did you uh, think? So I, I was watching the news when he was, like, giving his speech and, like, like telling everyone about it. And so first I was kind of, like, kind of excited, like, that, no, like, we're not going back to school. But then, like, after a few minutes, like, I got really sad because, like, this is our last year of middle school. And, like, we're going to miss all, like, the fun, like, end of year activities and stuff. Uh so it's just like a bummer, but it's to keep everyone safe and healthy. Uh, wait, Thank I just have question. a question. Um, will we ever make up some of those activities any other time or no? So, Sean, that is what the people who make the big bucks are making decisions about right now. So, Mr. Gonsalves, the superintendent, the school committee, the vice principal, they'll all be making those decisions. And all, all I can say is I'm not at those meetings, Sean. But I know, and I know them well, they're, we're going to make every effort to give you some kind of experience. Uh, and I, I'm not going to really comment what it's going to be like because I really don't know. But there are definitely, that is, we're having meetings tomorrow as teachers. 
And that's probably the number one priority for the eighth grade teachers. That's the number one priority um, that we're going to be discussing. Okay, Sean? Thank you. Thank you. So, Patricia, you round this out. How, um, you know, how did you feel? Obviously, like, I'm very sad that I won't be returning to, like, school for until, like, next year into the high school, obviously. But I think it was necessary because, obviously, we don't want more people dead than it should be by stopping the spread. So I think, overall, it was a good decision. Thank you, Patricia. Okay, so – we're, we're going a little bit long on time, but that's because you're all doing such a great job. So what I'm gonna do, if it's okay, I'm gonna throw out issue number three, which was about local government, because we touched upon government with Governor Baker, and I don't wanna kinda do two of the same questions. Well, I'm gonna go to issue four, and this is very honest. We're, you know, we're, we're hearing a lot on the news about teachers and remote learning, parents and remote learning. How's it going for them? And the one thing for me that I've noticed in the news that has been lacking is they really haven't got the perspective of the student. Um, so traditional learning versus remote learning. I'd like to hear from each of you. How is remote learning going for you? Um, what do you like about it? What do you not like about it? Obviously, we'll be very respectful not to get into specifics, but speak very generally and vaguely. Um, and uh, we're, we're going to let Nate, uh, remote learning, how's it going for you? Uh, it's going well. I mean, as far as it goes in terms of how much we're learning, we are losing like, what, 40% of an actual school day every day. So yes. there are definitely going to be a lot of learning gaps for people next year. Mm. But as far as the program goes, I think it's going decent or as well as it could be for an early stage. Thank you, Nate. Very, very well said. Um, Victoria, how is remote learning going for you? as a student? Um, overall, I think it's going pretty well. For some classes, it's probably going easier than for others, just because of the topics and what we're missing. So that just kind of like puts like a fear in the back of our minds. Like, what are we going to have to learn really quickly next year so we can so we can like add more on? But overall, like the program's going pretty well, yeah. Cool, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Okay, McKenna, how's it going for you, remote learning? Please let us know. Um, I'm enjoying it because, like, I feel like I can pick up a subject and if it's something that's, like, challenging me and I'm really not getting it and I'm just, like, frustrated with it, I can put it down and pick it up again later after doing a different subject. Whereas in class, we would have to, like, do that subject for the certain amount of time. But I also think that it can be challenging for some people that, like, because the schedule would be like, oh, I have to wake up at this time, but they're going to be like, I'm going to go to bed at like three in the morning because we don't have to go to school. Even okay. though we Very good. Uh, that was a very interesting perspective. I love hearing all of this. Um, Sean, my friend, how's it going for you? How's remote learning going for you? You know, the big picture, everything. But uh, Well, I feel like I'm in a classroom with just no students. So, um, yeah, but it, um, like Nate said, we learn less because we don't necessarily have the teacher's instruction every single step of the way. But it's also um, a learning path um, that I think from all this like remote learning, people will learn that you don't physically have to go to school in order to get a good education. That you could get it online more. And we're going into the new technological age now. And I think that people would be um, better off with having remote learning in some places right. like and, some and Sean, Sean, you bring up a good point. I mean, I know, I think a lot of you are maybe familiar with the University of Phoenix, which is all online remote learning. Um, so uh, you, you touched upon something pretty good there, Sean. Uh, Joshita, how's it going for you? Um, it's going pretty well. I, I like the fact that like we're still able to have learning in a sense, even though it feels like we're kind of bit in the dark but it's pretty good considering the fact this is the first time anyone's doing this mm -hmm. for anyone, for any students. And like, while we are missing a lot of like um, time with teachers to do like learning in a classroom, at least having this is a little better than having nothing. Yeah, it's better than just being, being at home. I mean, obviously I, me growing up in the 1980s, 
Um, we didn't have computers and clearly we know the virus lives on paper. So I don't know if I, when I was in eighth grade, I, I don't know what we would have done. So Joshita, you bring up a really, really good point. Um, Elise, how's it going for you? Oh, um, it's going pretty interesting. I mean, I like it, but like everyone else said, we're not really learning the same amount that we would be. And I miss going into classes and seeing my friends and stuff. But otherwise, I think it's it's going okay because I like waking up later also. Okay. Thanks. That's great. That's great. Um, Maddie, how's it going for you? It's going pretty well for me personally, and I'm enjoying being able to, like, switch between subjects and not have to stay and do one for, like, an hour or something as we do in school. And... But it has been a little difficult because there has been like some technological challenges, especially since many teachers haven't been using these programs and I've never used them before. And it's very new. And also, I know it's been hard for some people to because they really rely on like teacher support. And it's really hard to get that in remote learning. Good. Very well said. I couldn't have said that better myself, Maddie. Thank you. Christian, how's uh, it going for you? I think it's going pretty good. Um, I like how, like, um, we only have to do 30 minutes each day. It kind of, like, I feel like I don't have to, like, get up at a certain time to, like, you know, get on a bus to make it to school to go to class or whatever. I can just kind of, like, do my own thing, and I can do it at, like, any time of the day I want, which I normally do it in the morning and be done by, like, lunch. And so, yeah. Okay. And Patricia, remote learning versus traditional learning. How you, how's it going for you? I mean, it's going all right. I personally prefer like traditional learning because it's like easier for me to understand and comprehend um, information. But I think it's going very well. But like, like how um, Nate and Sean addressed, we're not getting as much education as if we're in traditional learning because it's like more less time per subject. So I'm just like personally worried if like we're going to be ready for next year, but that's just my. Okay, that, that, that's a very understandable issue. So, you know, normally we don't do this, but we actually have a guest commentator who was not originally on the original script, who is going to come in. Um, if that person could please come into the picture now, that would be great. Uh, here is our surprise guest. Yes, sir. Come on up. Come on down. We're waiting for you. You're holding up the show. Hello. All right. So this is Xander. This is Xander. And Xander, of course, the class knows you. And I think I don't think you've met any of them. But the question that we have for you is, you're on, by the way, he's on vacation this week. Melrose has vacation. They are not on vacation. How? Well, that's a whole other issue. We won't talk about that. But how is remote learning for you? Be honest. Tell awesome. them. Awesome. Tell them why. Because, um... I can do it as fast as I want, and then I can do, like, whatever I want after, like, that stuff. Um, that stuff? So you like it better than regular school? Way better. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're off screen. Do you? But I have oh, I got one more commentator. Everyone's a politician in this house. Bennett, could you please tell the panelists, how do you, what do you think of remote learning? Please. Uh, well, I think... Well, I think it is good sometimes. It could use a few tweaks. A few tweaks? What are those tweaks? Well, the thing is, is that I feel like they're giving us a lot more petty work and not actually learning. Petty work and busy work. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Dan. I, well, I came to school to learn not to work. Well, I'm going to make sure your teachers don't see this video. All right, buddy? Okay. All right. Say goodbye to the crowd. Bye. <laughs> All right. Sorry, they wanted to be on and they wanted to be a part of the show, so I appreciate it. Okay, issue five. Um, let's let's lighten the let's lighten it a little bit. Um, what is the best thing that you've watched, streamed, movie or television show, and the worst? And if you want to pass on this, you can. But I'd love to hear the entertainment value of what's been going on in your homes. Um, so, Nate, you got anything you liked or didn't like in terms of entertainment? Yeah, so I started watching uh, Community with Joel McHale, and that was pretty good. I love that. Um, yeah, and there wasn't really anything that was bad. So Okay. I love Community, and you're watching it on Netflix? Yeah. Cool. Very, very cool. Um, 
Okay, so Victoria, anything that you've been into entertainment-wise? It could also be music. It can also be books, whatever. Uh, anything that you like or anything you don't like? Um, I've watched quite a couple movies. Like some of my favorites that I watched like since the quarantine started. Where it's definitely like World War Z, 1917, Zombieland, the second one, like Double Tap, Pro and Promare. But then for TV shows, I started watching Grey's Anatomy. Oh, cool. Very. And is there yeah. anything? Is there anything that you've watched that you're not liking, or has it been pretty good for you? Um, it's been pretty good. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much, McKenna. What's been going on for you, entertainment-wise? You've been into anything? Not like anything? Um. So I don't really watch a lot of TV normally, but my mom introduced me to a show called Bones, and I've basically been watching it like nonstop when I'm not doing show. work. <laughs> For the That's past so week. Cool. And McKenna, is there anything that you've watched or shut off or anything that you haven't liked? Or has it been just uh, Not really, because I read a lot more than watching TV, but I've heard Tiger King is very bad because my dad was watching it. So Yeah, I have to say, I only lasted about 10 minutes in and I, I, I couldn't get into it. <laughs> it's but the craziest. Miss Darman, Miss Darman loves it. Miss Darman's a huge fan. Um, all right, so Sean, what have you liked? What have you not liked? Um, well, I'll tell you the favorite movie I watched over this past while is probably cool. The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, the one with the Joker? Yeah, with Heath Ledger. And and sadly, he passed away just a couple months after making that film. Yeah. Um, anything that you've shut off or anything that you don't recommend? Um, not at the moment, but I have to find something bad. Okay. Cool. Thank you, Sean. Um, Joshitha, what have you been into? Uh, so I started rewatching a lot of old Disney movies that, like, because I, like, we, um, like, just my family really loves Disney. So I, like, watched Onward right just now. And a TV show that I started watching, um, I don't remember the name of the show, but it's, like, this, it's on Netflix, where it's, like, yep. you know the kid from Stranger Things? I think his name's yeah. Gaiden or something. Yeah, yeah, he basically hosts like a prank show where he like oh, pulls. Yeah, I saw, yes. I saw a clip of that. Yeah, that's oh, so I've been cool. watching that. So pretty good. And the other one is a show about a doctor called The Good Doctor. So oh, it's the pretty good neat. Doctor. Oh, yeah. Yes. All right. Cool. Very good picks. I like this. Um, Elise, what have you been into entertainment wise? Okay. So on Netflix, I have been watching Miss Americana, the Taylor Swift documentary. I've watched it six times or more i can't really remember um go watch it um also i've been watching kim's convenience which is really good oh i saw that ad it's so funny um the office which i've watched two times in this quarantine break um th that's great <laughs> um and then for like music uh lots of taylor swift and ray lynn Raylan is great. And then me and McKenna were actually just jamming out to um, I Like It. Yeah. <laughs> I Like It by whom? Cardi B. <laughs> oh, my Cardi B. Okay, cool. That's awesome. So you can listen to music together. That's cool. Uh, okay, Maddie, what have you been into entertainment-wise? Um, I've been watching uh, this new show called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. Oh, will they sing? Will they start singing? Yeah. Oh, tell us and about it. Yeah, it's pretty good, and every and it, like there's a new episode every Sunday, and so it's been giving me something to look forward to because I'm like, two more days, and or something, and but I'm sad because the season finale is gonna be this week. Oh, so, so you, there's no seat. You can't binge watch seasons two, three, and, and and sadly they're not gonna make them for a while either. That 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 is very sad. That is very very sad. Yeah, uh, cool. and then go ahead. I've also been watching, like, it's tidying up with Marie Kondo because I just really enjoy watching, like, these messes of houses become, like, all clean and organized. And there hasn't been much bad that I've watched, but I haven't been watching very much because I've been Great. keeping myself busy. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Christian, what entertainment was? Uh, so I've I watched um, the second National Treasure, which was really good. Um, I've watched 
all the Good. Fast and Furious movies um twice. Like um and then I've watched like all Oceans like eleven, twelve and thirteen twice as well. So a lot of like action movies. Oh, wow. A lot of action movies. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Patricia, what about I you? I haven't been watching that many like TV shows. But um, I've started watching Stranger Things. And um, Dushita knows this, but there's this um, flat ah. earth <laughs> documentary called Behind the Curve. And I started on um, watching that. And <laughs> it's interesting. I'll just say that. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, that's cool. All right. So we're getting down to the last issue. We're getting down to the last issue. And you guys have, you guys could clearly be on any Sunday Washington DC show. You guys have been great with your commentating. Um, for the audience, we have been looking, you know, we've been doing civics all year with this wonderful group of kids, brand new curriculum that North Andover has never done before. We're working with the Democratic Knowledge Project in Harvard University. And, you know, these kids have been amazing. Um, so we did a little bit of an activity last week, and there was a focus question, and it was, how should the U.S. balance individual liberties with the need for collective safety and health in light of the COVID crisis? Obviously, one school is thought saying, you know, we need to put limitations on things and keep people safe. And then other pe people who say the government is just telling people what to do. It's ruining our freedom and liberties. Obviously, there's states talking about these reopening versus not opening. So... And again, this is a player pass for all of you because I know it's a pretty heavy, deep topic. Um, how, in your project, how did you weigh in on it? And if you wanted to talk about your product, and you don't have to talk about your product if you don't want to, how did you kind of encapsulate your thinking on this issue? And for the last one, I'm going to just mix it up a little bit. I'm going to go in reverse order, if that's okay. So, Patricia, what do you think? So, obviously, there's like, I can see both sides and realize, like, they make sense. Um, I personally believe that we should be like staying at home and like not opening up the economy just yet because uh, the spread is still at its peak and everything. And um, let's, I made this like kind of fake Twitter post I where um, uh, at the beginning I addressed like the other side and where it's you ha they want to open their rights. However, in order to stay safe, we have to sacrifice some of those rights because all of us want to stay safe and we just don't want any more harm done already than the virus is completed. So. Thank you, Patricia. Christian, what are your feelings on this? And tell us a little bit about your product of how you expressed yourself. Um, so uh, I, I like both um, like sides to it are like completely like understandable, like, but for my project i kind of did like a poster with like what i like my family and i kind of believe in yep. and we believe like you should like kind of like get out and kind of like get going again because like um like not every everyone's gonna get it at some point and most people are gonna be fine than others so like we, we kind of gotta get like rolling on this Okay, great. Thank you, Christian. Very well said. Um, Maddie, what are your feelings about this very controversial issue? I think that we should be limiting it more because, like, as it's been, like, fed a lot, but, like, we need to flatten the curve and so our health care doesn't get overwhelmed. And I, like, have seen a lot of it because a lot of people in my family are nurses or doctors, and so there's been a lot of them seeing a lot of cases and them being very full and they've been like running out of masks. And so I think it's very important to stay inside until it's slowed down a lot. Cause if everyone stayed inside for two weeks, which is unattainable, but if we all did, it would kill the virus. So if as many of us as possible can stay home, it will definitely help a lot and save a lot of lives. Thank you, Maddie. That was great. That was excellent. Elise, feelings about this controversial issue? Um, well, for my project, I did a song, and it was basically about how we should just, like, stay inside, even though it means giving up, like, part of our freedom, like, like going outside and socializing. I just, 
we should stay inside because it's really just for the best. Like it's it's going to be annoying, but it's for the best. To the best. Good. Very good, Elise. Thank you so much. Joshita, could you chime in on this civic issue, please? Yeah. So um, like I'm I feel like the most important thing is like kind of putting more limits, as Maddie said, and also finding a bit of a balance between economy and safety. Because, like, those two kind of go hand in hand at times. So what I kind of feel like is, like, maybe we should totally, like, have people, like, stay at home more. But we should also bring in, like, more help for them, like, to be able, like, okay, please stay at home. Don't go outside and stuff like this. Because, like, there have been a lot of, like, anti, like, stay at home protests, which kind right. of defeat the whole thing. So if people stay at home more and kind of, like, get the help that they need to be able to do that, then it'd work much better for everyone. Okay, great. Thank you. That was very well said. Sean, you hinted a little bit about your feelings a little bit earlier. So I think I know kind of where you're going. So just feel free to honestly and openly uh, respect, respectfully give us your opinion. Um, I think uh, at the, so what was I going to say? Uh, oh yeah. So I think we should give, um, you know, be quarantined in our houses and wear masks and everything, but this is give an excuse for people to take away our first amendment rights and our most like, precious amendments away like um as ben franklin said any society that will give up a little freedom to gain a little security will deserve neither and lose both um and yeah i, I don't think we should ban um uh, there was like this religious practice and i forget where it was but people were doing it in their cars and they still banned it like people were doing it in their cars so they were mm -hmm. socially distanced in their cars and the governor still banned it Okay, so obviously, obviously, Sean, you know, there are many people that feel your feel the way that you do in looking at the Bill of Rights and looking at the freedoms. And um, I know in Massachusetts, that may not be the most popular opinion, but if we were somewhere else, it may be different. So uh, I really appreciate you expressing your opinion, Sean, that isn't necessarily what everyone else is feeling. And, and, and you did it very, very well. Um, right. McKenna, what are your feelings on this hot topic? Um, I agree with Sean in the fact that we're definitely like should stay home but we shouldn't like give up our freedoms and our amendment rights because there's a lot of them like I feel like stuff is being banned and it doesn't necessarily have to be but I also agree with Christian in the fact that while we stay home like we can only do this for so long and still keep like surviving and our economy is going to drop soon if we don't like open it back up. And it's really a choice whether or not you go out and they're still just like slowly reopening the economy would probably be best like after the peak because like we can't go on like this forever as much as we want to. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very, very much. That was very well said. Uh, okay, Victoria, what, what are you thinking about this hot topic? You're the second to last person to weigh in on this. Okay, so for my project, I created a website. And on this topic, I feel that lots of people like don't really know the actual numbers of some of the things. So I'm just going to say them now. And that is that in the United States, there have been several studies done. And they've concluded that between... Only between only 33% and 36% of people actually know like all of the rights that they are given. Many of them cannot name all of them. So some people, not all of them, are using that as an excuse, saying, oh, you can't ban us from doing this or that. And I feel that if you're going to talk about specific um, rights that they might use, by saying, oh, you're taking this away from us, I feel like that there is a counterpoint to some of them, such as if you say, um, you're taking away our right to assemble, then, but like, you can like assemble, but it has to be in very small groups and only if you're not sick, or you can assemble online, like such as we are doing now. Mm -hmm. And then for like religious practices, there have been like many, like, like on Easter, they did a broadcast of like the sermon and then when it comes down to the other fear that comes with the economy they created the package to try and help relieve some of the 
things that occurred that are going to occur soon. And since like we're all aware that the economy might take a recession, then I feel like we can start planning ahead to try and stop the effects of it. Great. Thank you for sharing those statistics. Appreciate that. Okay, Nate, you want to chime in? You're the last person to talk about the political issue, my friend. All right. So personally, I agree with the, you know, stay at home, stop the spread, flatten the curve, a whole schnick. But um, I agree with the people that want to reopen everything because they can't feed their families and have no real source income. I don't agree with the protesters who are saying, you're violating our freedoms. I want to get my, you know, hair done. Those people are kind of ignorant about what the government is and isn't able to do in times of crisis. Great. Thank you very, very much. Um, okay. Well, I'm going to tell you totally seriously, uh, you know, in, in the four weeks we've been done, this is no doubt the best thing that I feel like I've been a part of. No offense. I love the lessons and I love talking to kids online. Um, I got it. This is a shout out segment and um, I'm going to give you an opportunity to give a shout out to anyone. So I'm going to start, I'm going to give a shout out. I, I'm going to probably embarrass her, but I'm going to give a shout out to McKenna because McKenna was the one who put this idea in my head that you guys want more. Um, and, and I, and McKenna, thank you so much for this. I think this is going to build into something bigger that'll involve all of you. I think when you're, you know, obviously I'm not cool. You guys are a lot cooler than I am. When I think your classmates see this video, I guarantee you there are going to be more people doing this. So McKenna, I'm giving you a shout out. The other shout out I want to give is all of the people that are working not from home. Okay. These are people that are going to work every day. And uh, um, three people that I'd like to thank are Mr. Kevin Foster, Mr. Todd Workman, and Mr. Paul Quintel, AKA Dookie, our three janitors at the at NAMS, they have been there non-stop cleaning and they actually i i, I want to give them a huge shout out uh i also have um my brother is a physical therapist my sister-in-law is a, a is an or nurse at um mass general and then one of my really good friends um melissa Chiatos, she is also in the or at mass general and my best friend in the world is a um, manager part owner of butcher boy in north andover chris maroon I wanted to give you a shout out as well. All right, um, this is player pass, but Nate, would you like to give everyone, anyone a shout out? Uh, yeah, again, just the essential workers who are being you know, underpaid without many benefits right now, having to do three times the work as they normally would. Nate, that is a, I'm glad you said underpaid as opposed to only talking about them working. Thank you very much. Uh, Victoria, any shout outs to family, friends, people out there in the world during the COVID crisis? I would just like to thank like everybody who's like still like going to work, like you said, and who's like on their like front lines trying to help people. Like even in our own local town, like they've set up a food bank, the police, the fire department, and um, like all the hospitals that are working. They like trying so hard to help save people in this time. So I feel like they really deserve like a good, like, thank you thank from everybody. Thank you. McKenna, shout out. Um, I actually want to shout out all the students at NAS, NAMS, and the elementary schools, like every, and just students in general, because, and the teachers, because we're all working to adjust to this. And I feel like it's a really hard adjustment because, well, we can't, like, see each other every day, and I feel like that's going to be hard for a lot of people, but it's also, like, we're doing a good job with it, I feel like. And I also want to shout out um, my aunt, who's working in a hospital right now. Oh, great. Down yeah. in Springfield, I think. Thank you. Thank her. Um, Sean, shout out, my friend. Uh, first, I'd like to shout out all the first responders that are – uh, working overtime and um, are not being able, some of them, even doctors are uh, sleeping outside in tents because they don't want to have the chance of infecting their family. And I'd also um, shout out all of our guardians, parents or guardians, because they have to deal with us for the past <laughs> six weeks now. Nice. Very nice, Sean. Thank you. Joshitha, shout out. Go. Uh, yeah, so I want to give a shout out to all the essential workers and especially like 
our doctors and nurses who have been putting in all this time to continue helping us, especially when they're like low on everything and they like need all the help that we can give them. Great. So. Well, very well said. Um, Elise, who do you want to give a shout out to? Um, I'm going to give a shout out to my mom because she's working and she's not, she's not a doctor or anything. Yeah. She's working and my dad's working and my grandpa's working. And I'm going to give a, a shout out to my sister. Oh, oh is, hey. She has to deal with me. For, What's her name? What's her name? Her name's Callie. Say hi. Hey. Hi. And Callie, what grade are you in, kiddo? First. And what school do you go to? Thompson. Thompson. All right. Very cool. You're the only, my boys were here earlier, but they don't live in North Andover. So you are the only elementary student in North Andover on this show. So congratulations to you. Very nice to meet you. And hopefully I'll see you in a couple of years in C106. Hopefully you'll be a civic student like your sister. I hope. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So then we're going to go to Maddie. Maddie, I'd love to hear from you. Shout out to anyone. Um, I want to shout out, like everyone said, the essential workers and especially doctors and nurses, especially my Uncle Richard, my Aunt Amy, and my Aunt Lisa, who are all working in hospitals right now because of the virus. And also, I'd like to shout out um, the people of Bangladesh, because not many people have heard of that, but I actually had the chance to go visit them in February before lots of air flights and stuff were closed. And it's insane what they're dealing with right now. And especially in like the overpopulated places and in the refugee camps where they don't have access to basic things that we take for granted, like soap and clean water. And so they're unable to protect themselves from this virus. So I'd like to shout out them. You can look them up. There's a lot of videos that are really insane of people trying to keep themselves safe. Wow, you just put a, you just, I'm sure for me, you just put a lot in perspective and I'm sure for the audience as well. So thank you. Christian, my friend. Uh, I want to give a shout out to all the first responders, the doctors, the nurses, the EMTs working around the clock to like make sure everyone's okay and like just working in general. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and Patricia, shout out. I'd like to like thank all of the um, essential workers for putting their lives at risk by going out every day, and as well as my like family because I don't know how they've been dealing with me for like four weeks. <laughs> it's insane. Yes. Well, this is the end of episode one. I feel pretty good that there's going to be an episode two, uh, hopefully with all of you, and maybe if each of you could bring a friend next time, this could we could get two shows instead of one. Uh, I'm going to stop recording after I say the words bye-bye, and then you guys can all stay on for a second so I can thank you. So um, from the McGravy Group, Civics in Action, Episode 1, I'd like to say bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs>